Hello and welcome to our discussion on molarity and dilution calculations. Before we begin calculations, we need to talk about some terminology that's more qualitative than quantitative. Um, we talk about, and you've probably talked about in your own house, dilution and dilute solutions and concentrated solutions, or you know, maybe, who knows, you buy concentrated dish soap or something like that. But um, you need two comparison. You have, you have to have something to compare to to call something dilute or concentrated. It's all relative. Now, if something's completely saturated, that's as concentrated as it can get. So there's sort of a, a limit to it, but you get the idea. A dilute solution contains a low or small amount, or concentration, sorry, of solute. So let's put that in. A low concentration of solute when you're dilute. A concentrated solution has a high concentration of solute. So you're sort of, let's say we're approaching maybe somewhere near what would be known to be a uh, saturated solution, where a dilute would be uh, dilute. If you look at these two beakers, this one has got the same number of particles uh, dissolved in it as this one does. So that's a good basis for comparison to say this one's more concentrated than this one. Now, how could you go from this to this? You could boil off the water, um, and that's, you know, wait a little while, you know, something like that. So um, in chemistry, though, we'll use a, a quantitative measure called molarity to better express concentration of solutions. And it's just as simple to say moles of solute divided by the liters of solution. Um, that's not to say that you put a volume of a, a solvent and then drop your solute in, because if that you do that, it will change the total volume. So this is usually done in a volumetric flask, as you'll find in lab soon. Um, keep in mind this is liters of solution, not milliliters. For example, 2.5 molar hydrochloric uh, HCl is a solution of 2.5 molar hydrochloric acid. So you have 2.5 moles of hydrochloric acid in one liter of solution. So you have a uh, a solution that contains both the acid and the water, and in total it makes one liter. It's not one liter of water plus 2.5 moles of hydrochloric acid. It's one liter of solution. Okay, so uh, this volume on bottom encapsulates everything that's there. <clears throat> so, oops, sneak peek. So let's calculate this one. Find the molarity of a solution that contains 0.35 moles of ammonium iodide in 100 mils of solution. So keep in mind it's moles per liter. So we would need to convert this 100 mil value to liters. So let's do that uh, just in our head first. Um, so uh, we would say 100 mils. And this is just using dimensional analysis because it's a tool that I find is always reliable. And hopefully you do too. And that's 0 0.1 liters. Now I know most of you could have gone, yeah, that means decimal goes here. That's 0 0.1 liters. Um, I'm moving the decimal three to the left from here to here. But I prefer the dimensional analysis to show me that I know what I'm talking about. Let's go ahead and imaginarily put a decimal there because uh, I don't want to mess the sig figs up. Um, and let's see, here we go. So we have molarity is equal to 0.35 moles divided by 0.1 liters. It gives us 3.5 molar solution of ammonium iodide. So that's how you uh, find the molarity of a solution. You divide moles by volume in liters. So here we have our own personal question. Find the molarity of a solution that is made by dissolving 53 grams of potassium chloride in 500 mils of solution. Now, you might notice now, hey, we didn't get molarity this time. That's true, but you guys have the skills to take a mass of potassium chloride and turn it into a molarity a molar value. And so we'll do that by finding the molar mass of potassium chloride first, then dividing 53 grams divided by that value, and then we'll divide that by this uh, volume converted to liters. So here we have that. So first step, 53 grams divided by 74.551 grams of potassium chloride from the periodic table. That gives us this mole value which you then divide by the volume in liters. Now, I would advise, and this, this graphic shows us a rounding and then dividing by the volume. You really don't need to do that. What you can do is in your dimensional analysis, go ahead and divide by 0 0.5000 liters, and that'll give you somewhere in the neighborhood of 1.42 molar potassium chloride solution when you dissolve 53 grams of potassium chloride and 500 mils of water. Now, when we did this question, we're assuming that this volume didn't change, okay? Uh, if, sorry, that we got 500 mils of water and put it in. Uh, this is telling us this is the total volume of solution if there's 53 grams of potassium chloride there. 
Um, in chemistry, we often need solutions of various molarities depending on the task. And so we'll have labs where we need a 0.15 molar solution or 0.2 molar solution. And we may have to start from a stock solution that's 12 molar. And so we dilute and we dilute with water. Um, and, and when we dilute, the number of moles of the solute we're working with won't change. The solute's diluted by adding solvent. And 99 times out of 100 in chemistry, it's going to be water. And so here's a concentrated beaker. It looks a whole lot like the one we saw earlier. And then your diluted beaker where water has been added. Particles stayed the same in total, but the volume increased. So we'll express that formula thusly. M1V1 is M2V2. So the molarity initially times the volume initially gives us a mole value. Now just to illustrate that idea, I just want to make this clear. When we multiply molarity, which is moles over liters, times the volume in liters, you get moles. And so this is basically setting two solutions equivalent in terms of moles. What's different is molarity and volume. Okay. So the mole values will be identical. The volumes are going to be what's different, just like we said a few minutes ago. All right, if you're preparing 100 mils of 0.4 molar magnesium sulfate from an initial solution of 2 molar magnesium sulfate, what was the initial volume of the solution? So in this question, um, we're going to use our, our molarity, uh, uh, sorry, our dilution formula. And we have our, um, in our final volume and molarity here, 100 mils. Uh, 0.4 molar. We need to convert this liter, so it's 0.1 liter. And this is our initial molarity. So we're going to be finding our initial volume, okay? The secondary question I'll talk about now is how much water did you add? And so you it's possible to get a question about dilution never having to, had to consider volume. You always need to consider what was added, okay? Because that's a fair line of questioning in chemistry. So here we go. Um, we started with uh, a 2 molar solution, 2 moles per liter, uh, multiplied by the volume we don't know, will be equal to 0.4 molar solution times our final volume, 0.1 liter or 100 mils. And so I'll solve for V1, and that gives me a value of 0 0.02 liters, which is 20 milliliters. Um, so we had 20 milliliters to start, and we had 100 milliliters to finish, and that gives us a volume of 80 milliliters added to our initial volume, uh, oh, sorry, so our initial volume was, sorry, was point, uh, sorry, 20 milliliters, or 0 0.02 liters. And our final volume in the question was 100 milliliters. So that means 80 milliliters of water must have been added. Okay? So in this dilution, the number of moles of particles didn't change. Okay? If I take this um, 20 milliliters and I multiply by 2, I get 0 0.04. If I take 0.4 times 0.1, I get 0 0.04. So the number of moles of particles stayed the same. It's the volume that changed. And it's always important to take into account that, that, that what volume of water was added. Right, final question. If you need 90 mils of 2 molar sulfuric acid and you have 10 milliliters of some stock solution, what was the molarity of the stock solution? Okay, so in this one we have, again, we have our final values. We have 2 molar solution and 90 mils of it is what we want over here. And you have 10 milliliters of stock solution. Stock just means um, concentrated or how it's distributed by the... Um, supply company or, or maybe it's you keep a stock solution of a certain molarity it just means that you've got a large quantity of this solution that you use to dilute from um, anyway so we have our final values and we have our initial volume so we're finding our initial molarity here okay so our initial, initial molarity times the initial volume which we said was 10 milliliters will give us a 2 molar solution and 90 mils of it and we set equal everything to M1, and we get a vol uh, initial concentration of 18 molar. And this is actually the molarity of uh, concentrated sulfuric acid that we buy from our vendors. And in this one, we don't really need to worry about what was added because it's in the question. We, ha we, we need 90 mils, and we have 10 mils of stock. So 80 mils of water was being added. Um, what we needed to calculate this time, what was the initial concentration of our uh, stock solution. So... The, the algebra here is very, stri very straightforward. It's more that you have to get comfortable decoding the question and determining what you're being asked to calculate. Um, we'll make sure that you're collecting any questions you have about these calculations now for class. And um, this concludes video five. You should have taken high quality notes. Please rewatch any portion of this video that you need to and come to class with questions.